Greetings, people. It's Mr. Pull the Trigger yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. Listen, this is the second. This is part two of Mr. Makado's confession. For those of you who don't know Makado, Makado is one man that was once in these occultic businesses. He was once a charlatan. He was also once a, a false prophet who went to Nigeria, who went to Congo, who went to all these other, you know, hubs of occultic uh, powers. You know, these other, these, all these occultic countries that we always refer to as the sources of this prophetic, you know, lie gospel. In that, that is Nigeria, that is Ghana, that is Congo. So Makado went to all these places seeking, you know, prophetic power, seeking occultic power so that he can lie to people, so that he can manipulate people, so that he can have fame, get money and, you know, also run a shrine here in South Africa. So listen to his confession. And on this part of the confession, he's basically, you know, categorizing the type of powers that they go seeking, the type of powers that they get when they go to these occultic uh, sorcerers who give them occultic powers, you know, to do fake miracles, to do fake healings, to do fake prophecies. So pay attention and listen carefully to what he has to say. Most of you might be enlightened. Most of you might start seeing the light and most of you might depart from these charlatans that are of evil, that are of the devil, that are of the dark world. And if you're first on this platform, drop a comment below, leave a like below, and most importantly, subscribe because I don't, I don't want you to miss a single episode of these series of enlightenment. They are very important to the body of Christ. That's why we have to keep them. That's why we have to be consistent so that we make sure that that scripture in the Bible, which says there's no rest for the wicked, can come to pass, can manifest. If we give if these people a time to breathe, they'll keep on masquerading and spreading this cancerous, you know, prophetic gospel that they've been doing and operating under these foreign powers, foreign gods. So listen to Mr. Mercado's uh, confession and testimonial of the occultic powers and rituals and stuff like that. And I'll keep bringing you more of his episodes and confessions until most of you, you get, you know, and a basic understanding, a true understanding of how these things work. That's what this is all about, enlightening you so that you get to a point where you decide for yourself whether you continue following charlatans or you desist or you stay away completely from them. Here's Mr. Pull the Trigger. I'll check you out on the next episode. Check out the next video. I will start with the issue of powers where the commissioner asked about the voodoo or what kind of powers are being used in these churches. There are different kind of, of powers. In this book, The Church Mafia, I speak about how I traveled. I did not go only to Nigeria. I also went to Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, where I was initiated and I saw what is called Mamba Muntu that is a half crocodile and a half human being and i saw it with my eyes i was not drunk i was not under any influence i saw it it came we went to the river during the night it was a full moon the light that was there was from the moon as we went in that river in an island called congolo in drc an island called congolo and when we went there, the man who was going to initiate me, they spoke French there. So the one who was interpreting for me is the one who took me there. So we went in, into the water and they did some incantation. And after doing some incantation, this being, it came as you were in the water. You are able to see during the night. It's quiet. You are able to see some movement from a distance. The water was just splashing. There was a sound and it took my concentration. I saw it was coming. I did not know what it was, but they told me that they are going to call their God, which is half human being and half crocodile. This thing came with a very powerful speed. You know, if a, a person is swimming as a human being, you are able to know this one is a human being by the speed. But this one, it was an extreme speed. It was coming and it came behind me at my back. It helped me here. I'm talking something that I saw it. Now, I, I, I could sense that it was big 
and the cloth and the hand that touched me here, it was not of a human being. It baptized me as in putting me in the water, and after that it gave me something like an egg, because I could not look at it, because I was afraid. It gave me something like an egg, then I had to swallow the egg with a shell. Then from then, the man did some incantation, then it went away. The way it was breathing, I, I could tell it is not a human being. As they gave me the, uh, the description, they said it's a half human being and half crocodile. And the hand, I could see this one, it was more of a lizard with nails. Now, after that episode, I had the encounter where I dreamt, it was a vision, this one, where I dreamt being underwater and being given instruction. So there is a physical manifestation that is also connected to dreams. So when a person has dreams, they are connected to the physical manifestation. So coming back to the uh, question of power, as I've said, these church leaders, uh, Commissioner Langa, they acquire different kinds of powers. The voodoo power, it's, it's one of the powers. And that is the reason why these days, in most of these mega churches, on their pulpits, you find that they have, they call it decoration, but it's not decoration. They put fruit. You know, the, when you worship voodoo, you can do your own research. They put fruit on the particular gods. Where the god is, there must be those fruits as a sign of a sacrifice. So, on this pulpit, they are very beautiful, but they are surrounded with fruits. So, that is a sign to show and say, on that pulpit, it is an altar of a voodoo. Because fruits in the church has nothing to do with the church. So, those fruits, they, they are a sign that we have sacrificed, we are giving you these fruits. And after the service, they can say, everyone come and pick up the apples. And people, they will go and pick up those apples, they start to eat. But they don't know that those fruits there, they've been sacrificed to the God, which is voodoo. And it does not end there. Others, they even go to an extent of using what we call marine spirits, which is called the water spirit. Water spirits has a, a, a background where you can trace it also in the Bible. It comes a long way. Now, this water spirit, number one, the church where your church is, it must be next to the water. There must be a river next to the water where you are able to take people for what we call baptism. But this is not the same baptism that Jesus encountered. This is a baptism into an, into an occult. It's more of initiation. So they use the water or the river that is next to the water, or they can even have a, a swimming pool in the church. If they have a swimming pool in the church, all members will have to via through that water. If they don't have a swimming pool in the church, they can make a, a service, a special service, where the pastor will say, I'm coming to wash your feet. Out of the blue, the pastor says, I just, God spoke to me that I can wash your feet. And every member in the church will take off their shoes because this is a marine kingdom that wants to influence the church. So every member of the church has to via through that particular water. So the pastor will come and wash you. He will take his time. He's a busy man, but he has to make sure that he does that by himself with his own hands. He'll bath your feet. That is what we call the uh, marine powers. In other instances, they, they use what they call do as I say. In my instead, they gave me a small horn. It was called Ashe. It's a Nigerian name. It's called Ashe. Now, with that horn that they gave me, they said before I could talk, I have to wrap that uh, particular uh, uh, muti on my tongue before I go to the pulpit. So they, they collect a lot of, of powers. Others, they even bury uh, 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 life, 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 life cows, life animals in the church. 
so that uh, their church can remain as powerful as they want it to be. So attending such churches, it, it makes church members to be victims of this kind of powers. You go to one building, but you've got more than 20 powers and you are not aware. Yet you are the one shouting the name of Jesus while you have been possessed by many powers in that particular church. And these powers, they work for one purpose, to bring the crowd. All they want is numbers. So they do anything that they can for these powers. And all these powers, as I have said earlier on, they've got their own characteristics. Some of the powers, they, they want blood sacrifice. That is the reason other members will die. They can be a stampede in that hall. They can be a stampede in that crusade. But life has to be lost in that particular environment. Others who are close and who've got, let's say, a, a particular gift. You can be a musician who's been loved by people in that church. And you are close to the pastor. As time goes on, the musician can have an accident. So they cause some of the members to experience uh, untimely death. Because those will be part of the sacrifice that these powers are looking for. I'm coming to the issue of South Africans. If are we the only one who are being these victims? When I went to Nigeria, I... I I was shocked to see how the world, that's especially the religious world, it is that side. People are practicing occult openly, Mr. Chen. In Nigeria, it's not something that people can hide it. And uh, uh, it was my first time to see a lot of churches, mega churches, where there is a lot of following, but they don't believe in Christ. Remember, I'm from South Africa. I'm from a Bible college. Even if I was looking for power, but my world says, if there is witchcraft, everybody hides. We don't talk about witchcraft. But in that country, people are proud to say, I'm the best witch here. And I can do and undo. That's what they love saying. I can do and undo. I can open and close. So, in South Africa, I think the lack of, of awareness... Because of these people, they hide through the gospel. They bring the gospel as a, a, a point of attraction while they know that they are practicing these particular practices. So in South Africa, the lack of knowledge. Most of South Africans, they were like me before I went to Nigeria. They did not believe that you can use witchcraft in the church. But my experience has taught me that it is possible to have an occult priest who is a witch and who is uh, uh, preaching on a Sunday at the same time because of what they say it is not what they do privately they are occult priests and on Sunday they stand as the men of God so South Africans we, we are at risk because of these people, not only foreigners, these days it is not foreigners. Even, even our own brothers here in South Africa, they are, they are joining this train. They are moving here, going out, going to acquire power. And once they have given you power, it's usually a snake. This is a snake that grows. And when it grows, you must have spiritual sons. That will be able to impart the same power they've given to you to others. So a lot of pastors, they go there, they collect these snakes from Nigeria. They bring it here to South Africa. It makes them uh, prosperous, famous. And here is a young pastor from the Bible College, like I was at that particular time. I looked to this pastor. I joined him. He gives me part of the snake. And he also goes and becomes a spiritual father. And you will target somebody else. And the other painful part, Mr. Chair and uh, the commission, it is that once you collect these powers from this country, you must make an oath that through you, other members of the secret cult, they will come to South Africa. So once you are successful using those powers, you will go back 
and collect other members who are struggling in that village and you bring them here to South Africa and you open a branch. You give them money, you do everything, they lead a branch. And what happens? South Africans, they flock there and they call another one. They come. So this, it becomes a chain. And all these foreign, most of these foreigners, they work with our local pastors. They work with people who are in high position of influence, pastoral fraternity. Most of those people in those top position, they work with them. But it looks as if they are fighting. When you look at them, it's like, I know, they are fighting. But they know that they are working together. So in answering the second question, I will say, South Africans, we become victims because we don't know what is occult. South Africans, we don't believe that witchcraft can be practiced in the church. Coming to the issue of the difference between the witchcraft and the traditional doctors. I will say you can find witchcraft practice in the church done by a man of the cloth. You can find witchcraft in a traditional doctor done by a traditional doctor. So in my own understanding, witchcraft is when you use powers for evil use or for evil purposes. That is witchcraft. Traditional doctors are people who use traditional ways, ancient ways, ancestral practices to do their practices. But even in that particular group, you can find those who don't sleep at night and they do their own things. And when you come to the house of the Lord, it is a, a modified witchcraft practice where one is given a bottle of oil and they will tell you, this oil is do as I say, you must pour it in the foot of your husband. Just because of it has a sticker of your church and is written from Jerusalem. Then we say this is not witchcraft, but it is the same practice. Some of the women, they, they've been told that during the night, around 12 o'clock, open that oil, speak and call your husband wherever he is. So those are witchcraft practices in the church. Thank you, sir.